All right, what are we doing, hon? We're taking her to the farm store today. We need to get some cat food and, oh, we're thinking about getting some, some emu toys. Yeah. And this place is animal friendly and it lets us bring it in as long as we have a leash, I think, or contained, I don't know. So let's see how this goes. So one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about today was about why we're so passionate about eggs and hatching eggs and incubating eggs and how to do that, why we're so into it, and why we think you should too. Let's talk about that. Close your eyes. Get some rest. Today I'm going to interview Jake and ask him some questions about incubating eggs. So what was the first animal or first time you incubated eggs? I'm pretty sure the first batch of eggs we incubated we actually bought off eBay and we bought, we really wanted some black copper morans and we found somebody that had black copper morans, uh, blue coppers and splash and we had a really bad hatch rate. We borrowed one of those little giant incubators from a local friend and we tried it out. It's one of those styrofoam, big styrofoam incubators. Pretty easy to use. And then we end up checking the temperature in there and it was way off, uh, actually down by the eggs from where the sensor was actually reading. We were totally hooked with hatching out our own eggs but we were so bummed at how it worked out. And so that's when we really started to look into getting a better incubator. All right, today we're testing out the flight suit diaper. It's for size mammoth. And we're gonna see if this will work for our emu. The world could fall down, it's gonna be okay. The sun could go out, we're gonna be okay. If all the blue skies fade, Now you've incubated several different kinds of eggs. Have you learned anything from your experience of hatching that you would like to share with us? Well, we've tried a little bit of everything. We've incubated in a lot of the tabletop incubators. Now we're using a cabinet incubator. We're testing out some really small incubators, some, some really cheap ones, and seeing the pros and cons with each ones. Of course, the, the cheap ones are great because of the price, but there's so many things, so many problems with them that the bigger, or more expensive incubators take care of for you. Our broody hens are doing a wonderful job. These silkies are doing a great job hatching out chicks and ducks and uh, our pea chicks for us, turkeys. So it's really cool to utilize them. We've just had to learn how to make space for them, how to separate them, either put them in a brooder, just to handle the situation when they actually hatch out, you know, whatever they're sitting on. If you really want to take the human element out of it, having a broody chicken is the, the best way, but not everybody has access to that. And that's why we really want to be versed in different types of incubators, test out as many as we can, just so we can fine tune this, we can have fun with the different types of birds we hatch out, and then we can converse with you and find different birds, different methods for doing what we do. This is our Brinzi Ova Easy Advance 100. It's a cabinet incubator, and this is taking care of all of our emu eggs. Uh, our first batch, of course, we had uh, two eggs, one hatched and one nearly made it. And right now we've got another two in here that are about three weeks to go. Now this is a significant investment. You wanna do something like this if you have expensive eggs, if you have big eggs like ostrich, emu, something that can't be handled in the smaller incubators. I never have to actually open the incubator outside of weighing the eggs once a week and to fill up the humidity pump up here. So I never actually have to open that up. I just fill up the humidity pump and then it pumps in. Right, right now it's running. It keeps a perfect temperature within a few tenths of a degree. It rotates back. Like I have it at 96 degrees, it's at 96 point five degrees, it goes back and forth between 96.5 and 95.5. What makes you 
more and more excited about incubating eggs. It's really the challenge of it. We love, uh, people keep asking us on the, the emu, why an emu? And we just really wanted the challenge. We thought, you know, if we can hatch out something this big, and then, you know, when the pheasants start laying eggs, and then we can hatch out something that's, you know, that small. We love our chickens and everything they produce. They are the staple of our of our farm. And so we love that they lay eggs for us and we love the varieties. We love trying different varieties of chicken, but it's so much fun. I think it's what gets me out of bed every morning is just the excitement of what's it's, new. It's way a big, big, big. After that, we actually have to raise them. And so that's a challenge in itself is just to find space for them to raise them. It's something that's so addicting is to see something that you, you know, an egg that you put in an incubator or under a broody hen and then to see new life come out of it. It's just something that I think everybody needs to experience. Not on my birthday. It's your birthday, huh? <laughs> Not on my birthday. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. All right, we've got a clogged drain here. Look, our water is just sitting here. And we're gonna investigate. So I'm gonna open this up and see what happens in here. We don't know if it's frozen pipes or clogged or what. Ah! 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 Oh, no. oh, oh my god. Ding ding. <laughs> oh, I'm so gross. <laughs> oh, that's so nasty. Yeah. Ooh, what? For somebody that has never hatched out eggs before, what advice would you give them for their first time hatching out eggs. Just like anything you do on the farm whenever you're expanding, start small. You know, you don't wanna buy a thousand dollar incubator if you don't know that you're gonna love doing it, if you don't know that you're gonna incubate more than uh, one set of eggs. If, if you have a friend or somebody else that has an incubator you can borrow, do that because that's how we got started is we borrowed an incubator, uh, we tested it out, then we started to grow to love it, and then we got our own, the Right Farm Incubator, a, a tabletop incubator. That was a fairly easy way to get into it, about a hundred bucks. And then just do your research as you're going into it. Okay, if you're doing chicken eggs, you know, they take 21 days. Um, know your temperatures and humidities that you need to stick to, and then just enjoy it. It's okay if you fail your first time, as long as you're not buying really expensive eggs. Don't try your first incubating experience with an emu egg, like you saw us do. Like, start with a, a chicken egg. Ask a local farm if they have some fertile eggs or buy some really cheap ones from somebody just to have the experience of hatching them out. And then as you start to get a feel for it, then you'll start to understand as you spread out to duck eggs or uh, turkey eggs or something else that you want the challenge with. Is it real could this be goal in incubating where do you see this developing or where's the future in uh, hatching your own eggs so the more I do this the more excited I get about trying different things that I either I haven't seen or at least that I haven't done my goal is to test every incubator on the market and to hatch out every kind of egg and so if you're somebody that has an incubator that we haven't tested out and you want us to test it out send it our way we'd love to test it. if you have ideas for different types of eggs that we can hatch out, we want to test those. Out. Then we'll be able to figure out, you know, what types of birds we enjoy raising, but we won't know if we don't try. I really love these little plastic feeders. It's a 50 pound feed holder. I think they're like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon and eBay. I'll link to them down in the description if you're interested. But these have worked really well for our cat feed and then some of our specialty chicken feed that will keep starter feed in, things like that. So right now I just poured out some of the old stuff into here so that can go on top and then I've got some new cat feed to go right in there. So for the wife of a hatchaholic, somebody that loves to incubate, how have you been able to support me in this? You know, what are your thoughts on something that I found that I love to do? I love that you found something you love to do. It's been a little bit hard because when I found out how much you spent on those emu eggs and one didn't hatch out, it's kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> I guess it's never perfect. It's all in God's hands, so you can't really blame anything you're doing because it's not in your hands but it's really awesome i love watching uh, birds hatch i love seeing them develop and then when they come out of the shell it's just amazing how they just come out of that shell and they're so tiny and just the way that they all work 
It's just amazing. So is there anything that's off limits? Is there anything that you won't let me hatch? I don't think so. As long as we can fit it in somewhere, it's not absolutely ridiculous. I do like to see different types of birds. I definitely love the variety that we have right now and, and love that we're gonna have more in the future. I don't know if there's anything off limits, but I just know that we're limited on space and you got kind of like to get out of hand a little bit. Hmm. Did you guys know it's Becky's birthday today? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. So it's trick one. Oh, you already right, got it. <laughs> I got two of them. I get it. Did you blow hard? Yeah. You got it, Eli? Yeah. You did it? What'd you wish for? Oh, I forgot to do that. <laughs>